Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2017. Presented by AWS, Intel, and our ecosystem of partners. Hey, welcome back to theCUBE's continuing coverage of AWS reInvent 2017 from beautiful Las Vegas. I'm Lisa Martin with my co-host Keith Townsend. We're very excited to welcome back CUBE alumni, uh, Nayaki Nayar from BMC, the president of Digital Services Management. Welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Keith. Really uh, excited to be here. I've been here before. Yes. And I love this forum uh, and uh, how you are able to scale this uh, and get our word around the world on this forum, thank you. Oh, fantastic. So, one of the first things I wanted to ask you, you know, we hear buzzwords all the time, every event that we're at, no matter what. And I want to know, what is multi-cloud? What does it mean to your customers? Or do they say, Nayaki, what is multi-cloud? Do we need one? Yes, so, you know, that's a very good question. Every customer I go talk to, the number one challenge they have is what we call this multi-cloud challenge. Because now customers are evolving their workloads. We heard from Andy how everyone is evolving their workloads into cloud. But it's not one cloud. They have hybrid clouds, managed clouds, private clouds, you name it, right? So proliferation of clouds is becoming a norm now. And how you help them manage the complexity of this multi-cloud is what is very unique for BMC and all the technology that we are releasing in the market is that's our sweet spot right now. So when, oh, no, go, go ahead. ahead. I was going to say, when, so when a customer comes and says, help me navigate this process, where do you start? Yeah, so you know the number one, you'd be surprised uh, when customers are planning the migration or they're in the journey of migrating the workloads to cloud, the first thing is they have to know what they own, right? Discovering their assets. And uh, it'd be interesting for most of the CIOs or head of technologies that I talk to, they don't even know what they own across all the data centers. So we have a product called Discovery for multi-cloud where it can discover all assets uh, customers have on-prem, but also assets across AWS. That is a partnership we announced with AWS and uh, with Azure or any other clouds that they have. And it actually builds a relationship across all of these assets. So you can plan, if you move one of those assets, what is the impact on the rest of the service, right? So, so that is the beauty of it. So Nayaki, I really love the discovery conversation. It is, it, it is a big challenge for most enterprises. AWS announcing 1,300 features this year alone. Yes. Amazing scale. But those assets don't look like conf traditional CI configuration items that we've seen in the past. Right. They're serverless, there's uh, databases. What, what, what does an asset look like in BMC so that uh, we normalize that and look at it across multiple yeah. clouds? Well, I mean, there are like uh, technology assets, but most importantly, when we took a look at an asset, it is uh, a business asset, right? You're providing a service, end-to-end -end service. The service could be a uh, listing as a service for an eBay website, right? And for that service, you have databases, you have application servers, you have code running on various parts. That is what discovery does, is being able to discover for that service, that business service that you have delivering to your customers or to your business, what all is mapped to that service. So when you actually assess the impact, if you move any one of them or uh, bring any one of them down, what is the impact to that business service? So obviously something like a dependency, if I have a listing service yes. for eBay, yes. and it's designed for an eBay process, but I move it somewhere else, yes. what does that mean towards the, basically the, the, the employee that needs to go and <laughs> list the item on uh, eBay, they, they, their job is impeded. Yes, yeah, so it immediately detects what impact uh, any uh, one of those, if those assets are moved or brought down or shut down for whatever reason, what is the impact on the rest of uh, the relationships and also the business uh, outcome or the business service that you're providing. So one of the things that John likes to pick on is the concept of multi-cloud, getting a little bit more into this definition of multi-cloud, is that we're not running workloads everywhere, are we saying that, you know, that we can't defeat gravity in the speed of light? Yeah. So you're not going to have uh, AI running in AWS and uh, across uh, uh, object storage and, and Google, multi-cloud, how are customers using multi-cloud? Yeah, so I would not say you have like 20 clouds that you are using. Typically companies have, of course on-prem, everyone has on-prem, or large enterprises, but then they also have a private cloud of their own, 
but then have one or two public clouds that they may have workloads. They may have AWS for sure and Azure. So typically that's what a customer landscape looks like. But even within these four or five clouds that you have to manage, it's still a big uh, landscape that technology leaders have to uh, manage and secure. Talk to us about what you guys have heard this week from AWS. One of the things that you mentioned this year alone, over 1,300 new services and features. Last year, I think it was 1,117. So this, the, the accelerated pace of innovation to yes. AWS is mind blowing. You think they probably need like a neck brace? <laughs> they're, they're going at such warp speed. But I'm wondering, how does their pace of innovation with your strategic partnership, how does that influence BMC? And what, what are some of the things that excite you about what you've heard this week? Yeah, so a couple of things. Uh, the very first one is, for our customers, BMC has what we call Remedy, one of the largest suite uh, for helping customers manage ITSM or IT service management. Most of our customers are moving that workload into public clouds like AWS. So for us, instead of trying to run it in our own cloud or in our uh, data centers, it's easier for our customers to just move that workload into cloud. So with the pace of innovation that AWS is releasing with 1,300 new features, we don't have to invest in all that. Or our customers don't have to invest on the infrastructure layer. We can just focus on the app side, the remedy side, right? That's one. The second one I was so excited about uh, was uh, Aurora. The announcement of Aurora on Postgres. And uh, we are actually working very closely with uh, AWS right now on certifying Remedy with Aurora uh, and Postgres. We are like a few weeks, few months away from uh, that announcement and that release. And once that gets out, all of our customers should be able to migrate their uh, Remedy system onto Aurora with using Postgres as a database, which is a huge cost savings for companies on the database side. So, so those are two big announcements you're very excited about. So I, I I know, and this is this talks to the pace of change. Yes. So you guys cutting edge to move Remedy to Postgres on, on Aurora. Serverless for Aurora was just announced yesterday. How does that impact? That even makes it our job even more easier, right? So for it to be able to just scale elastically without being like dependent on any one uh, instance or one server is, I think, just tremendously uh, futuristic and can help our customers and for us not to manage those server assets uh, in, in AWS, absolutely. So reducing friction, what does it mean to consume Remedy as a service versus worrying about all of that infrastructure? What does that actually mean yeah. to your customers? So it's not consuming Remedy as a service, it's service management as a service, hmm. right? So if you look at customers want to provide IT service management to their employees, how they consume that with a combined solution from BMC and AWS is the beauty of our partnership coming together. Let me ask you, on that front, what are, what are some of the feedback that you're getting from customers that helps reinforce the partnership with AWS and, and improve it? Yeah, in fact, after we announced the partnership with AWS, the, I would say, intake, the uh, flood of questions I got from all the customers around the world is, they're so happy to hear the partnership because now they can have BMC and AWS at the table discussing how we move their workload, which they had on-prem, into AWS and leverage the strength and the power of what AWS gives along with the power of what Remedy gives, yes. So service management, a huge, you know, I've heard CEOs and CIOs call service management the ERP yes. of IT. Yes. Meaning this is the central point where I go to, to consume IT services. How does multi-cloud impact the consumption of, of IT services through something like Remedy? Yes, so think of it, right? In the past, you were providing service management for all, IT service management for all your on-prem assets. Now your assets are all over multi-cloud. So it is like multi-cloud service management. So we do have the next iteration of Remedy, which uh, we call multi-cloud service management. So now customers can use, not just to provide service for their on-prem assets, but all their cloud assets through one service management tool. That's one, but even more little futuristic that, um, that we already announced with AWS is what we call cognitive service management. Is service management of future is not reactive, it's proactive. You detect an issue before it actually happens, and proactively uh, provide that service, and that is where our integration with Alexa and the AIML services come from, from Amazon. 
So as customers prepare to get ready for multi-cloud and the interface into service management, what are some of the things that they should be thinking about today? So as customers, first of all, discover, making sure you discover all the assets, plan uh, the phase at which those assets will move into cloud, but then don't forget that at the end of the day, you're providing a service to your end customers, your end employees, how that service is provided through a single, I would say, technology set or single suite will take them a long way. So that's where AWS and BMC suite really becomes uh, very powerful as customers are planning this journey. You mentioned Alexa for Business, and of course we heard all about that this morning. I see a smile on yes, your face. Yes. What is that going to mean for BMC? So in fact, we, were, we announced a partnership uh, with Amazon. I saw that on the slide, on I Alexa for that. Business, yes. yes. Where, think of it, when you go to work, and instead of uh, typing a ticket for requesting a service, you just ask Alexa, Alexa, my uh, laptop's not working, or my phone is having I an am issue. I'm so excited, man! And it all the Alexa about my laptop. <laughs> Alexa, my laptop. <laughs> so that is where we call Alexa for uh, business, where it's not just for consumer world; it's now entering into what I call the enterprise world, and being able to provide that experience, that end user experience, right, through what we call virtual agents and virtual assistants like Alexa, for customers, employees, to just ask the question and the entire service would be fulfilled right through Alexa. So obviously some of the first thoughts that come to my mind when it comes to that type of service, you know, I, I, I had an Alexa at home for a little while, and I should probably start calling it Echo because we're setting off a bunch of Echoes yes. across the world here. But I quickly got rid of it because my nine-year-old would come in the room and say, order 10 <laughs> cases of bubble gum, <laughs> and there's no authentication. So yes. how, 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 how are those types of enterprise issues getting addressed. Yeah, so that's what we call enterprise grade, right? How do you bring <laughs> enterprise rigor into uh, the technology that is coming from the consumer world? That's why when you ask Alexa uh, for a certain service or a request, it'll validate whether you have the authorization uh, to get that service. Um, and all of that integration inside our core uh, ITSM suite is already done and that's where the power of Alexa plus Remedy really becomes powerful. So how many, how many cases of gum do you actually have? I don't even like gum, <laughs> so it's going to take her a while to, to chew through all of that. <laughs> uh, well, if only we had more time to explore that. Nayaki, thank you so much for coming back and visiting us on theCUBE and sharing the excitement at BMC. Your energy and excitement for what you guys are doing is, is, is electric, so thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Lisa, thank you, Keith. It was an absolute pleasure, and thank you, everyone. Thanks a bunch. Awesome, we want to thank you for sticking around with us. For my co-host Keith Townsend, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live at AWS reInvent 2017. Don't go anywhere, we have great more segments coming back.